be said has already been said, is just that I haven't said it, as I like to say increasingly at these events. Pat Singh has become a philosopher. I am, I, it's unbelievable, Singh, your remarks today. Did you write those or did you make that up? No, you wrote it. Uh, we're thrilled with the operating engineers because at a time when we need very skilled workers, um, the operators are doing it. And look, I was just in the eastern part of the county, in North Lima, and uh, uh, trying to remember where else I was, over another community over there. Yeah, over in Harrison County. Uh, we have these very sophisticated projects that are being undertaken now in the oil and gas industry, and the operating engineers are playing a very large role. And they're working with us and our workforce transformation team, that's Tracy Intahar, to really drive training for jobs that exist. And I have to tell you that when it comes to these big projects that involve a lot of capital investment, if you don't have skilled workers, you're not going to win. And so we have a very good relationship with the operating engineers. They're fully integrated with us, I think, with our academic settings. And it is a great, great asset for what we have in the state. Uh, Dean, I, I was really, that was a wonderful talk. You know, I don't know whether Franklin County is going to get these bridges or not, but your point is it, it should go where it ought to go. That's sort of what we did on the capital bill on higher education. Put the money where it ought to go. Um, and the fact is, this program is unprecedented. It's never before has this kind of money ever been spent uh, to help local communities and counties. And uh, Jerry said, hey, when I was the, uh, the county engineer, and uh, Jerry, that was before we landed on the moon, I think. Um, he said, ODOT never gave me a bridge, which is true. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, Chris, that was a really good talk, and uh, I'd like to have all those statistics, because what you put together is almost a complete way in which we have looked at things. You might all recall back when I announced that we had overpromised and underdelivered, and so the word was, how did Kasich get his hands on all of our money and take it away? Well, we never took it away. Jerry just matched up the resources we had with the promises that had been made. And I remember as a young candidate for the state senate, uh, I said we needed this road, and the governor at that time said, well, just tell me you'll get the road. And I said, well, will we have the road? And he said, we'll take care of that later. Just go and tell them, okay? And that's the way things had been going for a long time. Over-promise, under-deliver. So we announced where we were got a lot of people uptight, but then we went to work. So there have been a number of things that have, that have happened here, and, and Chris mentioned a number of them. Number one, great significant efficiencies out of the Department of Transportation because of Jerry's leadership, okay? So significant savings, number one. Number two, you said it best, the direct and indirect opportunities provided by the taking advantage and leveraging the value of our turnpike. Thirdly, which I don't think you all understood this, this year we got another $71 million back from the federal government because other states were not prepared to fulfill their projects and we were ready, willing, and able. And as a result of that, we got money that other states should have had. Now don't tell anybody about that, okay, except keep it in Ohio. But that was another big chunk of money. Now, the bridge thing is something that has worried, worried me for a long time. Um, Jerry said, you know, everybody's diligent, blah, blah, blah. Maybe, maybe, I hope so. But when you think about bridges, you gotta be really careful, because it is our kids that travel, our families that travel over these bridges. 